initially had a he initially came into the program with a with an interest in water and water management and water pollution uh, but you know he also came to a program that is very applied in nature and what we myself and, and Lucy Davis do for for our students in the program we really try and connect them with real world problems going out there with nonprofits with governments and other institutions well, this is a situation where Zachary has turned inward and tried to develop an applied project for this institution. Uh, and while initially he came with the, the dreams of, of thinking about water, uh, he pretty immediately started uh, working very closely with the, with the office uh, call, eventually called the Center for Sustainable Development, which doesn't exist anymore. And and so I, I really, you know, want to attribute his initial, um, uh, his initial work was very closely with that center and with its staff in the center uh, to help him formulate this and shepherd this project through. Uh, now I want to thank the, the, the committee that's, that's come on uh, after the center has dissolved. Uh, Dr. Matthew Nallen, Kendra Stewart and Lancy Alfonso and so, uh, and with myself, uh, we constitute uh, Zachary's committee. Um, this has been a long road for Zachary and I am so excited about the, the product that he has on offer and has is making, uh, has created for this institution. And uh, we talked so long ago uh, about your dreams of, of figuring out, uh, just, you know, solving the problems of tracking data for, for sustainability institutions of higher education. And you certainly, and as our audience will learn, you, you went through uh, a lot uh, to get us to this point in this particular design, uh, including a pandemic, but more importantly, the politics of higher education, you, you got a very deep learning and understanding of how the institution as a whole works. And, and we're going to, and so this has been a, a quite a road, but um, but I think it, I'm pretty excited about what have a future at this institution. And so uh, thank everyone for for coming. And Zachary, take it away. Awesome. Well, thanks, Annette, for the introduction. And I'd like to thank everybody that came out uh, today to hear me talk for a little bit about my passion project and baby for the last three and a half years, four years. Uh, time just goes goes by really quick, but uh, thank you to the committee too for supporting me in the project. And Annette, uh, definitely from day one, pulling me in the program, setting the expectations, here's what we're gonna do, uh, plugging me in with the Sustainability Literacy Institute and really ena en enabling me to uh, brainstorm and craft this project in a way that really fit my uh, pain points and struggles as I worked through uh, the applied part of sustainability here on campus. So with that, uh, let's go ahead and get started. I'm going to share my screen and we will go. All right, let's see. All right, are you all able to see the screen okay? Yes. Perfect. All right, so uh, my project is titled The Methods to Design a Mobile Application to Assist Higher Education Institutions Sustainability Engagement and Assessment. And uh, as Dr. Watson mentioned earlier, uh, my committee is made up of Dr. Kendra Stewart, Dr. Matthew Nolan, and Lancy Afonso, with Annette being the committee chair. So I'd like to just give a quick overview of what sustainability is, particularly its use at the College of Charleston, but also the global implications of this research. So at the College of Charleston, sustainability is defined in the triple bottom line with the social, environmental, and economic systems interacting together. As you see in the chart, uh, where those systems overlap, that's considered the triple bottom line. Uh, the triple bottom line is a holistic view of how systems engage with one another. You can use it to 
troubleshoot solving problems, but also understand uh, limits of various systems in nature and in human development. So any move towards sustainability or sustainability lifestyles will be a gradual process because as you see in the chart on the left, there's a lot of interactions that are happening, but you have to see it in the context that the holistic move will be better for society as we move forward. Within, oh, sorry, within the uh, quest to move society forward and continue advancing and improving upon uh, dated institutional systems globally, uh, universities really hold the most power for educating and developing the next generation of our leaders. So universities bear a profound responsibility to increase awareness, knowledge, and exposure to technologies to create that sustainable future. So an introduction to the project. Uh, there have been limited studies done on higher education institutions utilizing mobile applications and studying their effectiveness. And with regards to sustainability mobile apps specifically, I was not able to come across uh, one in my lit review. A few of the universities and schools that are using technology to track data are in fact using it to uh, improve their outcomes or for reporting purposes. So that is, that is positive. Uh, they're just not using a mobile application to assist in that. Uh, app influence behavior change is possible. It's not verified on an app specific basis. For example, uh, Facebook or YouTube or other common apps you see on your phone. But when you look at and review a genre of applications holistically, for example, financial wellness apps, uh, health or mental health apps. These are very common, uh, big genres of applications. And there have been studies done documenting specific instances of attitude or behavior change within the user. Uh, as Annette mentioned in the introduction, College of Charleston is a bit unique. Uh, I came into the program at a time when the institution was transitioning into a new part of their quality enhancement program which is a program that they use that's tied to the assessment. So it basically <laughs> helps make our degrees that we grant as an institution worth something. Uh, with that, the Sustainability Literacy Institute uh, was the office that was formed. And the goal of that is to create uh, students who are able to be resilient change makers going into the future, helping tackle what's called 21st century problems. You might have heard of a few of these uh, coming up, whether it's climate change or global warming or social justice. All of these are examples of 21st century problems that that center is helping the college uh, have the knowledge and skills by the time they graduate to help address in society. So it's really cool, really cool. So the purpose of the project was to design a mobile app solution for supporting campus engagement and sustainability operations. Uh, looking to enhance operational capacity, data collection, and campus engagement for uh, specifically the sustainability offices. Also looking to advance literature. As I said, there's not uh, any, any study that I was able to find where this sort of topic is being discussed or studied. So I'm looking to inspire future research into higher ed adopting tech solutions to increase campus engagement through the sustainability lens. These were the research questions that really guided my project. Uh, the first one being, how can a mobile app be designed and developed to enhance sustainability operations, campus engagement, and community engagement? And what role does the application play in informing investments, whether it's financial, staff, uh, et cetera, looking for other uh, higher education institutions looking to enter the space? The second is a little bit more reflective on the design and it's looking at how the mobile app can be designed to meet the needs of the institution while also potentially driving behavior change in users. Uh, so both the user benefits and the school benefits. The methods for this project was a unique linkage between the software development life cycle and social science methods. Um, it was really cool working with Annette to create this methodology and sort of go through each iterative cycle. So it starts with an idea. You have an idea for say a new water bottle. <laughs> then you analyze the current solutions that are out there. Okay, there's like 50 different designs of water bottles. And then you work with your stakeholders to plan on how to design, in this case, a better mobile application specific to the higher education needs. This is followed by 
a tightly coupled design and code phase where you go through different iterations of the project and go back to your stakeholders and say, hey, is this what we were talking about? Was this the goal that we were trying to meet with this feature? If not, code it again. Uh, unfortunately, we were not able to work through this project in a, in a manner that made it easy to beta test given the time constraints uh, as well as COVID. So the project didn't make it to a beta test phase or a deployment phase, but these are also important parts of the, uh, sorry, of the system development life cycle that you need to understand before uh, taking on a new, new project. So starting with analyzing what's currently out there, uh, there are only six institutions globally that have attempted to integrate sustainability tech solutions into their campuses operations, whether that's to support campus engagement or uh, sustainability skill building or knowledge building. So none of the applications available have been created through this sort of methodology nor evaluated uh, for their effectiveness in reaching a goal. Uh, you'll see a couple of images here on the slide, uh, just kind of going in a clockwise fashion. We've got Notre Dame University's uh, example. Then we have Appalachian State University's example. Then we have the Hong Kong University of Science and Technology. Bottom left, or sorry, bottom right is the University of New South Wales and Australia. In the bottom middle, we have Hong Kong Polytech University's green map at PolyU. And finally, we have Oberlin College. As you'll see, uh, these applications vary quite differently in the visual uh, appeal and navigability of the applications. And each of those played a critical part in informing decisions for how uh, my application, Sustain CFC, would be created. So one of the methods that I used for evaluating the current tech that's out there was to take a application rating system that's been used extensively in studying behavior change and uh, if a application reaches the stated goals in the health and wellness sector. Uh, it's called MARS, Mobile Application Rating System. What I did was I took that and I modified it to meet the needs of my project. So the MARS system is broken down into various sections you'll see on the left side of the slide. The first one being engagement. Five questions related to, uh, is the app fun to use? Does the app lay the content, content out in a way that makes you want to engage with it? Is it gamified? Does the application have enough appeal that you want to keep using it and return to using it? The functionality that touches on uh, what's called the user interface or the layout of features within a visual space. So that gets into the navigation. Are you able to move between the screens uh, appropriately or logically? Does it take some time to get to learn how to navigate through the different layers? Are the layers functional? Does, it, does anything load? That sort of thing. Uh, section C dealt with the aesthetics. Uh, that's the layout of the application. It's different, however, from the engagement or functionality because it's strictly focused on the design and presentation of the content, whether it's photos, videos, maps that are within the application. Section D is the information section. What that uh, section's focused on is the quality and quantity of the content and how it's engaging the user through the application. For example, uh, you'll see on the bottom right, goals. Does the app have measurable scientific goals that it can be achieved uh, in its app store listing? So a lot of times when you go to download an application, you'll see the description in the app store that says, you know, hey, this app's to create a sticky note for your desktop. Well, if the app doesn't create a sticky note for the desktop, it's not gonna score very well on this mobile app system. So what we did, or what I did rather, was uh, modify the app specific part of this uh, rating system to evaluate each application on how it addresses the triple bottom line, as we talked about earlier, how it engages that education or knowledge base uh, or awareness for economic systems, social systems, and environmental systems. Uh, so I was really intrigued with how the scoring was created for this uh, system. I did modify some of the scoring to reflect if the information was not able to be accessed or if the application crashed constantly. Instead of just tossing the question, I gave it a zero score because even if the information was there because it did not load, uh, it was not therefore 
able to be assessed. So it didn't make sense to skew the results and have a higher end result score as a result of excluding the question. So that's what I did to uh, kind of quantitatively evaluate the applications. So the next method I used was stakeholder engagement at the College of Charleston. And this was done through focus groups or individual interviews. Uh, so in a recruitment email, when I first started engaging across the project, I would reach out to say the Department of Marketing, Student Affairs, the Sustainability Literacy Institute, Office of Institutional Effectiveness, et cetera, and essentially say, I'm creating a mobile application to try and increase sustainability operations. How can this application serve your office and or meet your approval standards? Followed again with, are there any concerns raised from your office or department's perspective that need to be addressed before your office stamps the seal of approval and we can go forward with the development of this product? Uh, these interviews happened uh, from October of 2017 all the way through August of 2019. So it was quite a long and iterative cycle, but I'm really glad that I did the stakeholder engagement because what an insight into how the institution uh, works and comes together to reach or try to reach common goals. The answers from these engagement opportunities, I organized in a matrix and organized it by their mission statement, their motivations to support this project, their specific data needs, problem or pain points, and their wish list. So here's the results of the project. Uh, as I said, I reviewed all six existing technologies and their scores and how they scored in each one of those sections are listed in this chart here. Uh, it's important to note uh, each application had a different purpose uh, stated in the App Store description, as well as a different function from a user perspective. Some applications were more focused on connecting users to recycling. Others were more focused on connecting users to learning about new topics. So they were more content heavy. Uh, it was interesting to me seeing how the, the final scores came out out of you know, the possible 130 to see which applications really stacked up. So let me walk you through the highest uh, scoring evaluated technology, Green Map at PolyU, so you can see what sort of uh, made this application stand out from the rest. So here we have a lot of screens uh, representing the mobile application. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to walk you through uh, not every screen, but some of the more pertinent screens here and how that affected the scoring when I was evaluating, evaluating it uh, quantitatively. So on the far left, you'll see what is the home screen. It's basically a very zoomed in map part of, part of campus. And on the top, you've got a ribbon with a menu button on the top left. When you first open the application, that's the home page. There's no instruction for how to navigate or how to use the application. So when you first open it, it's a little confusing as to what you're supposed to do. You can't click on any, it's, sorry, you cannot click on any individual building and have it pop up resources. You can really just zoom in and out and click the menu button. However, that being said, once you click the menu button, it sort of creates the first layer of the onion as it dives deeper into uh, the application you select which por portion of campus you're trying to learn more about or engage with. Then it pulls up a whole host of features ranging from where water stations are, where electric vehicle charging stations are, different events coming up or content, campus tours. Those are uh, exhibited in the middle uh, images here on the screen. Now, let's say you wanna figure out where you can refill your reusable water bottle. Well, you click drinking water station and it comes up with all of the drinking water stations across campus. This is immensely helpful from a user perspective for where can I uh, re re fill up my reusable water bottle. It's also beneficial from the institution standpoint as they're able to keep a constant record of where their resources are and which ones are getting the most use. Uh, you'll see also uh, on the top right, if you bring your own coffee cup, there are discounts that this campus offers in the dining hall. So it has all the related information right there, right on the resource, extremely easy to read, digest, and understand. Uh, one major drawback to the application, in addition to sort of the layeredness, and you have to kind of go back out to get to a different section of the application, is you cannot access all features just from this one application. So Hong Kong Polytech University actually has a suite 
of applications. They have three to be exact. Uh, and each one of them complement one area of uh, functionality for this application. One is focused on general campus. Uh, this one here is focused on a lot of the infrastructure improvements and uh, resources. And the last application is called PolyU Greencoin, which you see an example of in the bottom right. Uh, I was not able to download that application, so I could not see what function and form it had, but just the part of not having all of the resources being able to engage with one application, it lost some points there. So next I wanna talk about the results of my stakeholder engagement. So this project, as I said, uh, went through many iterations over a long period of time. And the opening discussion was the two uh, questions, one related to, hey, I'm creating this mobile app. How can it help your office? What does it need to do for your office to support it? And the next one looking at, you know, what does it need for your approval to move on in the development stage? So the first part of the chart was the motivations to support the project. It was really interesting to see which uh, offices and departments across campus were student facing. And what I mean by student facing is having the capacity to work with students along a uh, projected timeline for a thesis project or research project and be able to communicate efficiently and effectively, uh, maintain meeting schedules, understand deadlines uh, on a student scale and not the institutional scale of over a semester or over an academic year. Uh, as I worked through the stakeholder engagements throughout the iterations, I took notes of excuse me, took notes of particular quotes that came up in those interactions and I noted consistencies. What I did with those is I then coded them and what you'll see on the chart is sort of the code for what different quotes mean. On this slide and the slides following, you'll see a couple of those quotes pushed onto one side of the graph. These are the quotes that distilled down into some of the uh, codified examples within the chart. So uh, motivations to support. As soon as you tell somebody in an institution setting, hey, uh, this application is gonna provide data, everyone becomes interested. Oh, cool, how can we be part of that? What can we do? How can we use the data? We need this data, we need that data. So that was a key uh, buy-in point from a lot of the stakeholders as well. Wow, if this is generating data, I wanna be a part of that because we thrive as an institution on data. Another example was increasing efficiency at events. So the digital check-in uh, feature that's within the application and attendance monitoring. So if you check in digitally and then leave, it's not gonna give you credit for attending students, I'm sorry. Uh, but it's, it's supposed to help with bottlenecking at events. A lot of you that are uh, familiar with the CFC infrastructure on campus, it's a downtown campus with uh, tight streets and tight sidewalks. So if you're having a very large event with a prominent speaker, lines can go out into the street, it creates a safety risk, it delays in, uh, individuals coming into the event it's, it's really quite an event. So that was a huge point as well for getting a lot of uh, stakeholders on board with understanding that this can increase efficiency of their events. Another fun little plug was uh, a lot of stakeholders really appreciated the cross-discipline nature of the team. So I'm not a technical uh, coding background at all. My background is in environmental science and water law policy, but uh, I was able to through the support of the Sustainability Literacy Institute and Department of Computer Science, secure the funds necessary to hire uh, Chandler Long, who thankfully is in attendance today, uh, to code the project for me. So he was the one that actually did the development after I met with the stakeholders individually. So it was a real team effort to get this project uh, pushed forward and completed. So the data needs, as I mentioned earlier, were quite uh, prolific. Uh, you mentioned in everyone's head starts pinging across the room for how uh, they need this to improve this, to do this. So a key thing for the sustainability stakeholders was how can we engage more students with sustainability literacy across campus? During the first uh, two years of the project, the Sustainability Literacy Institute, through my role as a graduate student for outreach communication, we engaged with over 4,400 students across 136 events each of those students was exposed to triple bottom line, resiliency, learning uh, outcomes that were determined by the SLI. So they wanted to be able to track, are those uh, key points sticking with students a week down the road, a month down the road, a year down the road, 
at graduation. Uh, other data engagement came from volunteering data. Volunteering data at the College of Charleston is currently not tracked to its full potential. So students that are involved in the Bonners Leader Program or Alternative Break, those hours are getting counted on a consistent basis. But if you are just a student wanting to go out and uh, work with Habitat for Humanity or clean up some of the rivers and streams around the Charleston area, those hours are not always getting counted. So that creates a data problem for those data are not being utilized in reporting excuse me, in reporting tools such as ACE stars, which I'll talk about a little bit later, as well as campus marketing. I know the campus would love to say, hey, we have 10,000 students. Every student on average does about five hours of volunteering a month. Here's the number of organizations we support on a yearly basis. That's the sort of data that this project uh, ended up being able to create. So problem pain points, again, a lot of them reflect back onto data or connecting students, sorry, connecting students to support services or uh, advertising events. So advertising events on the College of Charleston's campus is commonly done through an email or by paper pamphlets posted all over campus. It's not the most efficient way from a sustainability standpoint, printing out and having to recycle all those papers all the time, but also students, uh, typically are very busy and they don't necessarily open their email to learn of new events to attend. So event attendance can be reduced and low and you're left with a department on campus scratching their head for, well, I don't know why students aren't attending or uh, we don't know how to create content that students would enjoy to get them to come out. So common problems, pain points highlighted throughout is how do we connect with our students and meet the students where they're at? The wish list of features, this was not originally uh, included in the matrix. Uh, I sort of added this in as the project went through iterative cycles. What this uh, led to was the, the new creation of features specifically targeted at a lot of the overlapping pain points or problem points. It's cool also because throughout the stakeholder engagement process, I was able to see where different offices are devoting resources to provide new student services or improve student services in the future. So trying to future-proof this, this product as much as possible, it was really interesting to see uh, how we could help them implement those future, uh, future services. So as I said, it was a long now process. Uh, these are the iterative examples of the Sustain CFC mobile application. On the far left, <laughs> These are, uh, this is a excerpt of the hand-drawn wireframes that I did uh, over Christmas break in 2017 when I fully committed to the project. Then uh, spring semester the following year, Chandler came on with support, as I said, from the computer science uh, department and the Sustainability Literacy Institute. So he put those uh, hand-drawn wireframes into digital form, which is the uh, model used to show the form and functionality for how different uh, layers of the application interact. So you'll notice on the hand-drawn version on the far left, I've got scribbles and notes for how different elements are going to react or change when a user engages with them. Uh, so yes, carrying, carrying through, you can see uh, over the course of two and a half years, uh, we went from a <laughs> unique uh, elementary design to a very sleek uh, College of Charleston branded final product. So here is the final iteration in its full glory. Uh, so with this application, it was important to build on not only what the stakeholders were talking with me about, but was what I reviewed as previously available technology. So you'll notice in the homepage, it's laid out to quickly distill and provide access to a whole host of features. There's a toolbar running across the middle of the screen where when you scroll up, it takes upon the top of the uh, scroll bar. You can collect and quickly access programs, events, uh, different blog content. The blog content can be photo, video, uh, can have a quiz, text content, whatever a, a department on campus wants to post in there, easy to do. Uh, you can also access the user profile page to adjust your own settings, which is something that uh, commonly was not a feature in the applications that I reviewed. However, for the higher education institution, in this case CFC, to receive uh, data from different individuals participating, we had to create 
that personalized program. It's important to note out uh, through the stakeholder engagement, you'll see on the far right, uh, live chat came in. So at the College of Charleston, as we're preparing students to become change makers and resilient advocates for their community, we want to be able to have conversations that might be uh, tough or hard to talk about in a public setting. So we were able to create an event chat that can be pu both public or private, depending on what uh, the admin for that particular event wants to set. So that is a really great way to make an event more inclusive and garner more student participation in that digital environment. You'll also see on the bottom right, the bike share program and the green office program. This project, as I said, was designed to help offices on campus with their existing programming and student services. The cool thing about this mobile app is we would be able to help the bike share digitize their records. As in, if a student checks out a bike on campus, right now you've got to fill out a whole bunch of forms, sign a waiver, watch a video. We digitize that entire process so you could check out a bike within 30 seconds. Uh, the app icon logo is what's shown on the bottom left. Uh, it's not just a random square with a logo. This logo featured what was going to be proposed as the Center for Sustainable Development's logo. Uh, that, however, was not approved. And so uh, it's a secondary logo. So this would not be publishable in its current uh, form at the moment. Something that came up with all the data that's being collected and managed was FERPA, data privacy and management. So in one of the apps that we went through, I believe it was Hong Kong University of Science and Technology, they have a secondhand exchange and they say, hey, you know, click this link to see how your data is gonna be used. You click the link and there's no, <laughs> no information for how that user's data is gonna be used. So we knew from the onset, we needed to be upfront with how the data is going to be collected, how it's gonna be used and what rights the user has to that data. So we crafted a terms and conditions and privacy policy for the application that's easy to read and understand. Case in point, how many of you have actually read Apple's terms of uh, service, conditions, privacy policy? Most of us just scroll through it and click the bottom because it's filled with so much legal jargon to protect the company and sometimes exploit you as a user with data. So we, don't, we wanted to avoid that. Additionally, we did not want to put student data uh, privacy at risk or break any sort of FERPA rules. For those that are unfamiliar with FERPA, Essentially it's HIPAA, which is your healthcare privacy rights, but it's for your student data as well. So we worked with the registrar's office on campus, uh, the IT department and a couple of other stakeholders to figure out how this project could uh, function without breaking any sort of uh, confidentiality within those different agreements and laws. What we came up with was as long as the student is reporting the data uh, on their own behalf, totally fine to use. We cannot scrape the institution's database to pull that information into the application because we would have to have individual student approval, uh, a FERPA release for accessing and using that information. Another way that we helped with data privacy and management, uh, making the application more inclusive to the user set was the pronoun uh, feature. So we removed the gender selecting between male, female, or other and provided a opportunity for individuals to push their pronouns. Uh, so we have 12 uh, pre-written, uh, sorry, pre-selected pronouns uh, that come from a drop-down menu, but a user is always welcome to input their own pronouns uh, as they see fit. This was a huge request from uh, the Office of Sustainability and the uh, Office of Institutional Diversity. So the second part of the results, it was how can mobile app be designed to meet the needs of the college, but also drive behavior change for users. Right now, the College of Charleston is assessing their sustainability performance in two main areas. The first being STARS, which is a program of AISHI. AISHI is the largest uh, higher education sustainability uh, group in the world. And their reporting frame framework, STARS, is one of the most widely used frameworks. There are about 13 frameworks that higher ed can use for reporting their sustainability data. STARS has frequently been studied and ranked among the top, if not the best, uh, for the inclusivity of data points across the triple bottom line, social, environmental, economic factors. You'll see the breakdown uh, beneath it for all the different sections. How it's scored is based on what data you're reporting. So if you don't have any uh, 
let's see, well-being or work initiatives on your campus, you're not going to be uh, receiving points taken away. Uh, you're only getting scored on what you submit. The United Nations Sustainable Development Goals, this is a global initiative by the UN to push society as a whole forward. Uh, these are listed here, goals one through 17. Each of these goals have sub-targets listed beneath them. So right now, the college uses the UN Sustainability, sorry, UN Sustainable Development Goals uh, and the associated quiz to assess sustainability knowledge for their students. This was used when the quality enhancement program was initiated and it's used when uh, students graduate the college. The mobile app, Sustain CFC, is able to help in both of these instances. For example, the volunteer data that I was talking about, we're able to quickly capture that data and spit it back out. For every student that's engaged with any sort of volunteer opportunity on campus or off campus. Additionally, for the sustainable development goals, we're able to provide uh, the administrators with a way to help increase, uh, sorry, increase the uh, quality education goal four, for one example, by adding in accessibility features across campus, such as uh, wheelchair ramps or uh, audio readers on the different websites, et cetera. Uh, we've got that built into the application. Additionally, the application data that's coming in from both from all of the engagement opportunities within the application can easily be managed to sort through for, fu for funding different marketing efforts and tracking uh, for future studies. So what does that look like? Well, we've got a wide user base and we have a wide range of benefits. Each user on the right, the application had to be able to benefit either through me uh, meeting their particular needs or driving behavior change. Commonly, or sorry, often, both were trying to be done in tandem. So for students, they can implement this application in their daily lives, as I mentioned earlier, by finding uh, reusable water stations, looking at bike repair stations, reading through content, maybe a, pro a professor shared additional lecture notes from class or there was a guest speaker and the videos posted in the application. So they primarily use it for those skill building and knowledge uh, based opportunities while also being able to engage on campus and virtually with the campus community. Faculty and staff can use the application by requesting various data points if they're gonna do a study. They can increase student participation by pushing some of their content onto the application's content screen and by uh, encouraging students to post their own content and experiences within the application. The administration, the true, goal, the true uh, needs of the administration, total value of, of this sort of product is yet to be determined but administration can easily use this product to accurately uh, project return on investment for their financial decisions. So higher ed as a whole has very limited and lean budgets that they're trying to manage to provide the best opportunity for their uh, staff and students possible. Our application lets uh, the administration survey and query and poll students, faculty and staff on different campus improvements, uh, initiatives, bringing different speakers to campus, all before it happens. So before there's any financial outlay of human capital uh, with time or uh, money. The benefits of having a wide user set is you're getting a whole lot of data and quantifying it from a lot of different sources. So the data management of this application would essentially replace four different softwares that, are, that CFC might subscribe to at this point in time. That would be campus engagement software, volunteer management software, uh, uh, polling software, and of course, an events manager. So future research from the project can easily be set up by tracking users versus non-users. Uh, setting up a longitudinal study would be ideal to see and measure student retention data, uh, knowledge either increased or decreased from frequently using the application over many years. And it would be interesting to see how the cohorts come out uh, differently. I project that students using this application will come out uh, with a higher retention and graduation rate than students who aren't engaged because there are many studies out there that show the more engaged a student is with your campus community, the more likely they are to finish uh, their education and especially finish that education in four years, talking about undergrads here. So uh, certification and assessment, I just touched on that. 
The application quickly compiles data sets and shares it uh, across the institution. Whoever has admin access uh, will quickly be able to access data. This removes the issue of, say, the Center for Student Leadership and the Sustainability Literacy Institute trying to capture data for the same thing. It also enables sharing of data easily through limited gate gatekeeper access. For the students, we're quantifying their behavioral impact. So they're also seeing how their uh, knowledge gain or skill gain or volunteer impact on campus or off campus is benefiting their community. Uh, so it's a really unique, uh, it's a really unique opportunity for engaging multiple users within a digital space. The gamification of the application is really what's helping drive that potential behavior change in users. So you'll see a really sleek user interface over here on the survey screen. When a user is confronted with a interface that doesn't make sense or is hard to read or does not make navigational sense, they don't really wanna engage with it. With the application, you can send notification reminders, hey, fill out this survey to figure out how you get to campus so that we can look to add uh, like a bike repair station, et cetera. Um, and these, these essentially would pop up on the home page of the application to be right there on the forefront. Uh, persuasive design, again, this is coming in where how we order the tiles on the home page is going to elicit a response for where a user is going to select first. Uh, experience points and the user achievements and badges, we developed an algorithm that would increase a user's uh, level or rank uh, as they progress through uh, completing more activities either in the real world with the application or directly in the digital sphere. You'll see on the far right an example of some of the badges. Uh, these badges would be tailored to either student learning outcomes or uh, an event manager's special event. So if College of Charleston, they have their day of service. If you participate in that volunteering day of service, you would get a badge signifying that day of service. Uh, there are data visualization tools available um, within the application, as I said. Uh, these are primarily going to be used by the institution view. Rewards were built into this uh, user experience points and achievements, but the rewards were not compatible with the College of Charleston's uh, procurement policies, and they could not determine how to best implement uh, that feature and functionalization on campus. So that was scrapped from the final design of the application. Uh, this is just a couple more screens here uh, showing the infrastructure map on campus. So when you select a water refill station in an Adelstone library, tells you exactly where it is and you tap direction, your device's native map system, whether it's an Apple iPhone, you'd go to maps or an Android phone, you'd go to Google maps. Uh, you get turn by turn directions to the nearest uh, sustainability resource on campus. This can also be modified to offer campus tours, whether it's focused on sustainability or just generally walking you through uh, key aspects around campus. Another pertinent uh, functionality that was brought up by the, C by the MARS mobile application rating document was the ability for a user to adjust their uh, profile and content to their desired needs. So you can adjust text size from small to large. You can change your profile picture, banner, uh, et cetera, all from the account settings screen. When we presented the final version to our stakeholders across campus, they were thrilled with the final design. They, they loved it. Uh, in fact, the technology stakeholders that we were engaging with, excuse me, we're excited because this application could have the potential to replace two or three uh, projects that they were starting to go through the idea and planning phase for. So being able to save the college money and implement some of those features and functions into this uh, type of product would really be of great benefit to that particular office. Additionally, marketing was excited to be able to use this as another channel to engage students with content they're producing for College Today and other marketing mediums. The, uh, universe, the university, sorry, the University of Sustainability, uh, Center for Sustainable Development, which is uh, again, no longer relevant, was excited to be able to use the application instantly to boost uh, their reporting abilities for applying for their ACE STARS goal. Uh, this was actually submitted, the report was submitted uh, last year and we as CFC received a silver rating, I believe on that report. 
So on the next uh, report, reports are good for about three years, they'll be able to file this project as an innovation and they'll get an increase uh, in their total, total points, total score as a result. So that's really exciting to be able to contribute to the success of the evaluation of my institution's sustainability engagement. After all of the stakeholders uh, reviewed the application and it was wrapped up and ready to roll, I sent it back through the CSMARS temp, uh, quantitative rubric just to kind of see how it would settle up against its peers as this would now be the seventh globally uh, that would be able to be evaluated. So as you can see, if you remember from the previous slide, uh, the green map at Poly U, which was the highest one that uh, was reviewed, they had a total points of 100 out of 130. There may be some slight bias, I, I must admit in this, but it was not purposefully scored to score one point higher. <laughs> that was just a, a happy coincidence in my opinion, but it goes to show that the application was designed in a manner that was uh, responsible enough to meet its desired outcomes in a way that scored higher than the existing technology that's already out there. That to me was a huge win and very rewarding. So uh, just briefly want to talk about key challenges, uh, reflect on the project and recommend uh, future engagement. So the biggest challenge with this project was the stakeholder engagement, trying to set up meetings and operate uh, consistent calendar of iteration and feedback was quite challenging. This project engaged over 25% of the institution's leadership stakeholders across campus. So trying to meet with decision makers is a challenge uh, in and of itself, but also you get into that student facing perspective I mentioned earlier of working on a student time frame. There were some stakeholders we met with that could only meet once a semester or could only meet twice throughout the whole course of the project. This created uh, different barriers uh, that we had to work around, but I'm really thankful that I included stakeholders in this project because I got a firsthand insight into the personability of the pain points each office across campus experienced. I really wish that more uh, higher education institu institutions would utilize mobile apps to assist in reaching their sustainable uh, sorry, sustainability goals or campus engagement goals, as I believe this is a true untapped potential given the numerous pain points experienced across campus. If, if uh, the College of Charleston were to adopt such a technology, they would instantly become the global leader for implementing sustainability technologies on campus. That's massive. And coming from a platform of the Sustainability Literacy Institute for creating those sort of global changes is really rewarding. So I'm thankful again for the project and how it came out, um, but that is, that's the project in a whole. So here's my references. Uh, if you wanna see more references, I've got about six pages in my thesis document, happy to share them with you, but now I'll open it up to questions. Thank you. Thanks, Zachary. Round of applause for Zachary. I can stop sharing my screen. And now um, we can enter the public question period. Uh, folks are welcome to just uh, jump on in, uh, ask a question, or you can put a question in the chat. Uh, and so anyone uh, is welcome to ask Zachary questions. So, so Zachary, first a comment and then a question. Uh, kudos on, uh, first of all, your stakeholder analysis and then trying to get uh, as many stakeholders uh, as you have across campus uh, is, uh, is, is pretty impressive. Uh, from a student standpoint, just getting hold of everyone, it can be very challenging. So kudos on that. Um, uh, great work on, on your wireframes and consideration for things that students don't usually think about, you know, whether it's FERPA, um, user interface analysis and, and uh, coordination with other systems on campus and the uses of badges. So. Uh, very quickly, well, what recommendations would you have for any other student who tried to combine the four different things that you did, which was uh, look at universal frameworks, um, a QEP plan together, uh, software development life cycle. So bottom line, if you're trying to create an app, what recommendations would you have for any student who was brave enough to try and go through this process in the future? Kind of lessons you've learned uh, that, that sure. would help future students. 
Sure. Yeah. Um, my first recommendation would would definitely be you cannot do this project alone. Uh, don't don't even try. You will fail. Not that failing is bad, but you you will fail. Uh, you need to have a key stakeholder that garners that initial support that helps bring on other stakeholders to generate that community buy-in for the project. That'll help you when you feel like you're lost, when you're reaching a wall in a development standpoint and help you keep moving forward. I'm really happy to say that uh, Dan Dickison was that very stakeholder for me in this project. Dan was the first individual that I showed my hand-drawn wireframes and was like, hey, I wanna do this, but the sustainability people, they don't really understand the use. Can you, can you help me with this? And he did. So for that, I'm immensely thankful. The third thing is that you need to find somebody, if you don't have the technical skill set, who you have a great relationship with to code and develop. I'm immensely thankful for uh, Dr. Uh, Sebastian Van Delden. He used to be the chair of the computer science department. He and Todd Lavasser, the director of the QEP, let me put out a call for an internship essentially saying, hey, I need somebody to develop this. And we had three students that were interested and I interviewed all of them and uh, Chandler Long, who again is in the audience here today. I, as soon as we sat down for the interview, I knew we had something special and he would be able to work through this project with me. Granted, we didn't know how long it was gonna take, but that, that's really the three things is you gotta have stakeholders, someone that's gonna support you even when you're hitting a wall. You need to have <laughs> that key uh, technical advice to get through it. And I already forgot my second one, but it, it's all important. <laughs> oh, don't do it alone. I think that was the first one. Anyways. I have a quick question, Zach, if you don't Any mind. Any other questions? Uh, yes. Yeah. Um, congratulations, by the way. Thank you very much for inviting me to this. And uh, uh, I'm very impressed by the whole, the totality of it. Uh, I'm, I'm only disappointed in that the college wasn't able to help you see this through and uh, actualize the project. Hopefully that is down the road for us. Um, but one thing uh, concerns me, uh, I, I'm just curious if your planning included uh, steps by which you would have early adopters and thereby uh, additional adopters to have users. Uh, what, what were your thoughts in that area? I'm curious. Sure. So uh, I did design a beta test for this project. Uh, unfortunately, for uh, COVID and other reasons with the project timeline, I was not able to conduct the beta test, but I did design it. Uh, and in that beta test design, garnering the initial users would come from uh, launching at a big event, for example, Sustain Fest. Uh, it's the big sustainability event for those that aren't familiar that happens on our campus every like third week of August or first week of September. Um, we have a speaker, we have music, it's a big festival. Uh, we usually have between three and 400 attendees. So at the Sustain Fest, where we were initially hoping to launch in 2018, that didn't happen. So at 2019, uh, we sent out a, a survey on the physical sign-in forms saying, hey, if we had a mobile app that helped get through this line quicker uh, and connect you with some of the other resources that it, that it had, would you download it? Would you use it? And I, I still have that spreadsheet somewhere. Of the 365 attendees, over 64% of students attending that event said they would download it, said they would use it, wanted to see it when it, when it came out. So if I was able to do the beta test, that 64% would have been the first users coming in or targeted for that beta test. But yeah, uh, garnering initial users is hard for any project on campus, whether it's a mobile app or a new initiative the school wants to take part in. So uh, in the deployability, we did not look at that for this project. Um, so that's really the answer to your question there. Thank you. Yeah, we, uh, and just to add to that, um, the committee initially had helped Zachary all the way through the, the letter of introduction to these first users to mm -hmm. get them on board. We even had IRB. I think we had just gotten through IRB approval yep. for that stage of it. And then the yep. pandemic hit. So that's why, you know, it, it, one of the key reasons why it didn't get deployed and, and didn't get beta test fully. 
Any other questions? Lucy. Um, I'm not quite familiar with how much it costs for a, for a university to adopt an app. Um, but I guess ideally you would like for many universities to have this app so that we can compare that data and get an idea of like where we actually stand. Cause I know you mentioned that there are about five or six similar apps like this, but we have a lot more or this one specifically, we have already adapted it. Um, but um, this one, <laughs> this one has a lot more data. So what do you think it would be like in terms of cost and the accessibility to other universities? Um, make this really accessible to them. Sure, yeah, so this project was uh, specifically designed for the College of Charleston within the College of Charleston uh, system uh, to create an application like this from scratch, uh, which was <laughs> the option I had before I was able to bring Chandler on, it was probably gonna be between 75 and $160,000 to develop it to the point where we ended uh, there on iteration four. Um, obviously, as I pointed out, colleges do not have that sort of cash just laying around to develop and then further support and maintain that investment. So uh, that answer was, that was shut down. So that's when I found Chandler to do it. Now, this uh, project has uh, gone through a IP determination process with the school and I'm now working to commercialize this product so that other schools can benefit from it. In part of the transition from this particular project to that commercialization, a lot of the CFC specific elements that are coded into it obviously were pushed back because one form, one size does not fit all. And that's especially true with sustainability. You saw in the ACHE reporting graphic, all the different sections where you can report every institution doesn't have the capacity or the willpower sometimes to report all of those. So it makes no sense to include a lot of these great things we put in for CFC into that commercialized product. But to answer your question going forward, since it does provide a lot of data and the ability to replace uh, three, four, five other softwares that a university might subscribe to, uh, there is a cost uh, that it would be sold at. Um, but. I won't, I won't talk about that here because it's not really part of the project, but to answer your question, it's CFC uh, focused. And so therefore we saved uh, CFC a considerable amount of funds uh, by this being a student led project. Now Chandler and mine's wallet might beg to differ for paying for tuition and stuff, but I digress. <laughs> awesome, what a great applied research project. Um, happy to see it. Thanks Lucy. Any other questions or comments from the public? Yeah, exactly. go for it. <laughs> Hello. Um, so congratulations. Uh, I was going to say, I remember uh, when I came to interview for my job here, I sat next to you at the table here and you were telling me all about this amazing app. Um, so it was really exciting to sit here today and watch uh, you present this. Um, so yeah, just incredible, incredible work for you and Chandler. Um, so I was going to ask, you know, with only kind of six other applications out there, you know, mm -hmm. as you were going through this process, what barriers did you see for higher education institutes to, to have an app? And then how did you kind of take those barriers in your design of this one uh, to kind of help break those down for higher education institutes? Sure. So the first answer would definitely be, how was the application constructed? Was it developed internally? Did they go out and get a third party software uh, that is called white label where you buy a product and you just customize it to your needs? Or is it a standalone uh, privately developed application that they bought? Uh, five of the six applications were or seem to be developed in-house. One of them uh, uses a third party software called Guidebook, App State, sorry, App State. They used Guidebook. I will point out a uh, guidebook is commonly used as a uh, information kiosk uh, in a digital sense for conferences or uh, things where a lot of a large number of people need access to information. Can't really communicate through it. It routes you to different uh, websites off the application. It's just an information hub. The five applications that seem to be developed internally 
uh, one of them actually listed the development team of a couple faculty members and a few students. That's great. But all of the applications with the exception of Notre Dame mobile have not been updated in a long time. Uh, for example, Oberlin College 2015, uh, Green, Poly, Green Poly U 2018, uh, Hong Kong UST 2017. So it's really a challenge for universities to develop them in-house and then keep them going after they're developed. Forget you know onboarding users, et cetera, just maintaining uh, the life of the software is a very uh, arduous task, arguably for uh, staff members at institutions that are already maxed out in their work responsibilities. So that's a big barrier, I think, to other institutions creating this sort of a product themselves is the sheer amount of time and resiliency required to commit to it, put resources behind it, and really make it a central part of the culture on that campus. Thanks. Any other questions or comments? All right, seeing none, um, uh, we'll give you another well, round of applause. Oh, do is there another one? Yeah, yeah just real quickly. Oh, go uh, ahead, Megan. I didn't sorry. see you. Great job, Zach. I know you've been working on this since we both started the program. <laughs> um, I just had a question about like the platforms. Was the app designed to be compatible with uh, like Androids and um, iPhones and other devices, like would it still work on iPads? Yeah, that's actually a great question uh, that I was hoping somebody would ask here in the Q&A because there just wasn't uh, time to devote in the presentation. So of the applications that I reviewed, only, one of, only two of them are cross-platform compatible. That being the App States Guide, which is no longer available or listed on a, a marketplace, and Notre Dame Mobile. The other applications are strictly designed for iOS or Apple products. So it was really important for uh, garnering a large amount of users to be able to not exclude a particular user by the type of device that they either can afford or happen to purchase and automatically excluded them from this technology. So it was designed uh, with best practices for uh, iOS and Android operating systems. It can work on tablets, uh, et cetera. So thanks for that question. Good, I don't want to cut anybody else off. Um, <laughs> any, anyone else have any final questions for Zachary? All right. Okay, okay, with that, we'll, we will now give you your final round of applause and the committee, please stay here uh, and the public is invited.